Would you uh, call the roll? I know we're in good hands with the attorneys. 
Uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had <laughs> there are indeed, but I'm really pleased to see us moving forward with this since I moved to Danbury from New Jersey where we have a municipal collection where we don't have to worry about paying a garbage hauler or anything. I have asked the mayor and Eric West frequently for municipal collection. I know this does not include that, but nonetheless, I still think it's wise if we control our destiny with trash or heaven help all of us. Thank you. Thank you for attending 15 years worth of those meetings because I can attest that they are no disrespect, Cheryl, but they are really painful. <laughs> Got two hours on a snowy morning. Go right ahead. Uh, any other member of the public wish to address the council this evening? Folks, I don't mean to put you on the spot. You just came in. Is there anything you want to say because we're getting ready to. What? Yes, sir. I'm here to Okay. Okay, with that, then I'll uh, finish the uh, public speaking portion of the meeting. There's, at this time, there's no more, there's no really announcements except uh, Merry Christmas and all that good stuff. Um, so we're going to juggle the schedule. Mr. So Cobb is going to move that we uh, take the executive session first. Unfortunately, everybody that just got here is going to have to clear the room. Uh, I'm going to invite them to, well, I'll let you make a motion and I'll tell you what you're I'd like to make a motion that we. Uh, Return, retired to executive session. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Rotella. Any discussion about the executive session? Seeing none, uh, try your minds. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, uh, this time, uh, just for members of the public that are here, it's not that we're doing that. We are actually doing things in secret right now because this is a, a discussion about the acquisition of real property that's very sensitive. I would like to listen to that. You can't, sir. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, we will. Why the Sir, you can't. I'm sorry. Any idea how long? I'm going to guess about an hour. So if you want to get a cup of coffee and come back, you're welcome to do that. There'll be plenty of public discussion uh, once the council's been briefed. So, with that, yes, sir. It's going to be discussing my property there in place. I would like to see what's going on. That's my opinion. That's specifically why you're not invited to attend. But beyond that, no disrespect, I love you, but you're going to have to exit the room. Okay, so we've got about five minutes to play the room. Thank you. Okay, in terms of an invitation in, the team from Malcolm Fernie will stay, Cheryl Reedy will stay, Julia Rice is our alternate for HRA, he's been invited in. Uh, Mike McLaughlin and Will Quinn Shepherd will stay as administrative assistants. And uh, our city engineer, Fried Corey, and Tony Arnold is somewhere in the room. And uh, our, our legal counsel, obviously, will be here. Executive session uh, for acquisition of real property on your agenda. So, um, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, item one, please. Resolution. Resolution of intent. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Please use the. Uh, uh, what's your pleasure, Council? Councilman Cowell. Thank you, Aaron. This time I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt the resolution of intent as presented. Sorry. Motion made and seconded by Councilman Seabury. Uh, discussion under the resolution of intent. Uh, Mr. Simon. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, trying to keep the question within parameters that wouldn't um, violate the executive session issues. I have a couple of questions concerning some of the discussions which occurred regarding the resolution of intent that I don't think go into the executive session item specifically. Trying to understand the purpose of the resolution of intent as opposed to an actual resolution or an ordinance or proposing an ordinance to actually issue bonds. I'm trying to understand why the resolution of intent is required and what it obligates us to do or not to do. And what other steps, and several questions here, what other steps we would have to take in order to bond? Or does this actually set it in motion? Uh, to you, either to sure, the sure. council or to whoever can respond to that. Yep. Uh, the resolution of intent, in, uh, unless you can certainly jump in at any time, uh, does not um, is not a bond document. It's not does not give the authority uh, to the authority or to uh, Danbury, the city of Danbury, to issue any kind of bonds. 
It simply says that any cost that's incurred going forward and it has occurred up to the last 60 days with either our consultants or our legal team uh, or uh, that might be incurred in any way towards, towards the acquisition of, a, of the site would be reimbursed by the authority should they go forward uh, and do a borrowing on their own. In other words, you would bundle in, say, your um, consultant fees, your attorney fees, and say this is the number that the city spent up to this point, uh, we'd expect to be reimbursed, and uh, they would have to go ahead and, and reimburse us for that. And that's the, the, I adjusted that down. Uh, secondly, <coughs> Frank DeCole, Bond Council, indicated that it provides a tax relief provision also so that the uh, authority is not saddled with tax obligations later on. Uh, this resolution protects them or any other entity from a tax liability if this is enacted or adopted by the council. Now, um, I think your second question, Councilman, was does this allow, what, what would happen for there to be bond? In other words, how would that work? Um, that would be under the purview of the authority once it's created. Uh, Mr. DeCole did indicate that uh, the authority would need the authorization of the city council to move forward in any kind of borrowing. So even if the authority is formulated, people are appointed, they can't go out and borrow money. They have to come back to us uh, because of a variety of different reasons. I have a follow-up for the chair. Just so I'm clear that the purpose of the resolution of intent, if I understand the bond council that explained it, was to basically state that we are going to seek bonding or that bonding would cover these expenses so that we don't pay for them and then after the fact decide that we're going to cover these expenses through bonding. You can't pick and choose as you go along how to pay for something. You have to make a decision. And this resolution of intent telegraphs to the federal government. That's our intent. You, you, exactly. In other words, you can't go ahead and spend a year's worth of, of uh, city funds to try to uh, go after this this procedure and then look to get the recovery from an entity later on. You have to, as quickly as possible, cover your expenses and make sure you're covered through the ultimate authority creation. Now, but then, trying to continue through the chair, but it's a reverse work. If, for example, the authority never went forward or if we didn't acquire the, whatever we were looking to get, or if bonds were never floated with regard to this issue, the city then itself would have to pay through some means, aside from bonding, pursuant to what would grow out of this resolution potentially for those expenses. That's right. Uh, and with regard to the actual numbers here, and if the authority was created pursuant to the, the subsequent agenda item, two million, ten million, whatever it is, whatever bond amount that they would potentially flow, and we would have to authorize, does that have to go to the voters, or is that under the authority's auspices and we just give them an authorization as a council. How does, I just want to make sure how that works with regard to this large number and an authority. Frank, Frank DeCole's advice is that there's not going to have, have to go to the voters, that the procedure, including the creation of the authority and the borrowing there under, uh, is done through the Common Council under the auspices of statutes as they are now. In normal economic times, the authority um, probably wouldn't even need our full faith and credit. Uh, when they formed the New Haven Authority last year, it was a different economy uh, that did a very similar thing with their transfer station. They didn't need the full, I don't believe they needed the full faith and credit of the, New Haven, of the city of New Haven. This is much is extraordinary financial times, and in order to get the right interest rate, um, to get the interest rate that makes sense, they would need our <coughs> faith and credit. It means they have to come back here for adoption by this uh, council, and then it goes back to the authority, and they have to vote to actually do the borrowing. I just want to make sure that this voting fair, this resolution, is not going to obligate us to bond anything. Remember that it's the authority that will be bonding. The city of Danbury provides full faith and credit, so it's the authority that has to go through the statutory procedures to revenue bond. Right, I, I understand that, but I think the concern of, of some members was that this, in some way, uh, binds uh, the city to some procedure in bonding, but instead what it does is it allows us to be able to seek those bonding dollars should the bonding occur in order to reimburse these expenses. This is not an authorization. Exactly right. That's correct. Exactly. That's correct. Any uh, further discussion? Mr. Viscount. Thank you, Your Honor. If I may, uh, just for record, if we go to bonding for whatever the amount of money may be, or the authority goes for bonding, whoever, we're not going to give the voters any uh, say in this? We're just going to go with a bond? 
Is that correct? Well, the authority under the Connecticut General Statutes doesn't hold a vote. They don't, they're, 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 you know, we're required to hold a vote if we bond over, you know, the threshold that the charter has set up, but the authority is not uh, required to, to go to the voters um, uh, to do that. I don't know. And the, the authority is, again, a creation of, this, of, the, of the state government, the state statutes, and the authority is given certain powers, very broad powers, and includes the power to issue revenue bonds. The city is not the one who's borrowing. The city is the one who's pledging full faith and credit, and that's why you don't have to go to the voters. But the approval process from the city standpoint is, as you, as the Common Council decides by vote whether to pledge its full faith and credit behind the authority's <coughs> revenue bonds. That's how it works. So that's where the public, as far as an actual vote, does need to be involved under this uh, uh, type of uh, scenario. Technically, Fred, no authority has to go to the voters. We have a number of them. Uh, Victor Park just bonded uh, probably six, seven hundred thousand dollars to rebuild the bunkers in <coughs> the voters. Side. Follow up for me. Did the, the authority could ask for any amount, or is this just ten million? Or well, they're, they're, they're not going to ask for any amount without your support. No, I understand that. Right? <laughs> so, and, and they won't be able to borrow what they can support uh, from the revenue. So, you know, they're going to look at um, bond council have to show prospective investors that they're going to be able to pay this back based on the revenue that they're taking in. So, there, there are limitations to what they can do. They, they just can't run off and borrow whatever they want. Thank you, uh, Mr. Perkins. Thank you. This is a huge amount of information to process in such a short amount of time. I think we had 24 hours. I got my uh, that was late Saturday afternoon. Um, I, I just think that, um, at least for myself, I'm not going to speak for other council members, but I am um, not even disputing the merits of whether or not cities should own uh, this type of service. I just can't can't really support this this intent right now, just because of uh, the initial amount of uncertainty. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, discussion? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds on the vote for the resolution in 10. All those in favor, <coughs> please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Per anybody opposed? Mr. Perkins? Is it a negative? And Mr. Viscount. Thank you. Okay, item uh, two. Madam Clerk. I'm to ordinance Danbury Solid Waste Authority. It's a pleasure, Council. Mr. Cowell. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that the ordinance relating to the creation of the Danbury Solid Waste and Recycling be referred to a public hearing and then followed by a committee of the whole. Second. It doesn't, uh, seeing no objection, uh, so where's any objection on? Okay. Uh, then that's been referred. Thank you, so Mr. Cowell. And then finally, uh, Madam Clerk, item three. Item three, communication, request for funds, legal fees. It's a pleasure, Council. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Your Honor. In reference to the um, resolution that was uh, passed here tonight and the ordinance having to be referred to public hearing, I'd like to. Um, authorize the transfer of $75,000 from the contingency account into legal services fee with relation to both the resolution and the ordinance, uh, the proposed ordinance. Made and seconded by Mr. Curran. Any discussion related to the appropriation of $75,000, Mr. Sinise? The chair to a corporation council. Is this $75,000 going to be the maximum amount projected to spend or there? going to be more after this? There could be more depending upon the extent of review and how serious the procedures get. At this point, this will cover uh, many of the expenses incurred in the recent past and some of the expenses in the not too distant future, but there's no way to tell, no way to guarantee that this will be the maximum amount. Depends on the level of additional due diligence that's coming along. Thank you, Mr. Shaney. Any further discussion related to the appropriation? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds out. I hope, sorry, Mr. Uh, to the chair of the Corporation Council, uh, I don't think this actually relates to any discussions of evaluation or anything, but uh, if it does, let me know and 
not have to respond on the record. But with regard to legal fees, has an estimate been done as to the potential exposure of the city concerning legal fees uh, in this process? Because, as we discussed under the resolution of intent, to the extent that some of these uh, wheels don't keep moving and, and the gears lock in place like we may want them to, we won't get reimbursement through a bond issue on them and the city will have to pay those fees. And I think what Councilman Cheney is concerned about is the city getting locked into paying a significant amount of legal fees and then having to pay for it and then in the end really not having uh, a lot to show for it. So without going into specific dollars right now, is there, is there sort of an estimate or a plan that, that shows what this exposure might be? Well, the, the point from here to worst case is fairly, fairly, the debt gap is fairly wide, as you can understand. Uh, we'll certainly uh, come back to you and keep you informed as to where we are in maybe January and give you a better idea of what a, an additional scenario might look like. We don't have, there's no way to calculate a number like that, Tom, because there's no way to know how, to what depth uh, that procedure may get us into. At this point, uh, this, is, this is just the first stab at the estimate. And I can just add to that, um, if this will be very complex, as, as Councilman Sadi has mentioned, but it's also moving very fast. Um, so, uh, you know, we should have resolution. We'll have resolution by July one way or another. If I may follow up, not so much a question, but a comment and a, and a request. Because of that, and I understand it from a legal standpoint, that you can't necessarily map out all the complexities that could occur, and all the I mean, all the contingencies that could occur. So what I would ask is, uh, on the record, that we do receive, whether it's executive session most likely, an update in January with regard to uh, how things are proceeding, the expenses incurred, because I think a lot of the concern here is not that the votes on these agenda items tonight are specifically requiring us to do anything, but that as we go down this road and it might accelerate, we're going to move to a position where we're going to be voting on absolutes. We're going to be voting on dollar amounts and authorizations. And before doing that, I think updates in executive session as necessary under the FOIA statute would, would help out. I think we, you know, at our next, we're not going to put this on the January agenda. In, uh, I think it's January 7th. This issue is too big for one, you know, and all the other business that we have to conduct that night. We'll be having another special meeting at some point in the middle of January. Um, and we'll put an executive session on there to discuss acquisition of real property. Uh, once again, update you where we are. We may have some clarity at that point with the administration in place also in Washington and some other issues we might be able to share with you at that point. So I think that's point well taken and we're certainly willing to do that. And, and just one more request, Bob, that that be something where we'd hopefully be able to get to the extent it's available, the information. It might require additional meetings. You know, we don't really want to come here necessarily more times than necessary, but at a time when we can digest it, and then vote maybe, you know, at, not after the fact, five or ten minutes or 15 minutes after the fact, but a substantive time afterwards to digest the information. Uh, I know it's, it's moving fast. That might require additional special meetings. And as uh, you know, I also reserve the right to brief council leadership, uh, which is well within the uh, freedom of information, and share uh, relevant pertinent information that you can then share with your respective caucuses as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Levy and then Mr. Rotan. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, are the consultant fees part of the legal fees as expert witnesses or information? Mr. Levy, for purposes of this particular request, we are considering that because it's, it's all wrapped into the first advice to the council about the overall project status. So we are considering those consultant fees for, the, for this purpose tonight, this item on the agenda as part of the legal fees. Through the chair. Then we'll receive as to uh, estimates as to what that consultant total package will be along with. Depending, it might be broken out separately or depending, depending, yeah, depending on the scope of services. In other words, let's say we want to engage uh, Malcolm Verney the next step, which would be to design an operating system uh, to um, uh, help us put out, for example, a bid for a private operator to operate to the, the physical separation of the garbage. I mean, they have a wraparound service on, on how to have the turnkey basically get open. We may want to engage them in those next steps going forward. That would be another fee structure that would be based with that. We would report that back to you guys. Okay. Does he... Thank you. And Mr. Tyler. Thanks, so, Your Honor. Um, the last few minutes we've been focusing on the negatives, and understandably so, but I'd just like to focus on a positive for a second. Is, is it, it's my understanding that if the procedures that we are contemplating this evening 
are ultimately successful, we will be reimbursed for these costs in total. Is that correct or close to being correct? Plus interest. Yes, that's, that's, that's the plan. The funds that we're, we're, we, we are expending tonight, the 75000 whatever additional funds we may have to, including ancillary costs, will be reimbursed to the taxpayers if we are successful in what we've been talking about. Plus interest, or interest. Right. Any other uh, discussion related to this appropriation? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, motion passed unanimously. Um, I do want to thank uh, all of you for, I know I promised you to be out here at 8.30, just 10 o'clock, so you can, you can yell and beat me up later. I want to wish everybody a very happy holiday season, and uh, thank you for your uh, contributions tonight. Everybody, uh, your input was valuable. I also, uh, I'm going to extend all committees. I don't know if, if I have to do that a special thing, but I'll do it anyway just to cover myself. And um, uh, I appreciate it again everybody coming out. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to return into our department heads. Thank you very much for coming out as well. Made by Councilman Cabo, all seconded by Mr. Knapp. All in favor of Germany, come up and say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. We'll return.